Okay, this is a big box and this is CMF's first phone. Now you'll be like, what? Who's CMF? Well, Nothing launched their sub-brand CMF and this is CMF's first phone. And wasn't Nothing's last phone supposed to be the affordable version? And wait a minute, Nothing's co-founder long back tweeted, and this CMF phone has the same depth camera. In fact, CMF claimed that they'll have the best processor in the segment. But again, CMF comes with Diamond City 7300, which might sound like a better processor than the previous version. But if you look at the score, it scores lesser than the previous version. So what is this CMF phone one? Who is this for? What is the price? And is this the best phone around 20,000? We'll see all of that. Let's go. And CMF has also launched a bunch of other stuff, so there's a lot to unbox. You get the phone, there's a USB-C cable, this fancy SIM ejector tool with the CMF logo. By the way, in case you're wondering, CMF stands for color, material and finish. I hope it meant a compact multi-device charger. <laughs> because there is no charger in the box. Additionally, they have launched the CMF Watch Pro 2 and CMF Buds Pro 2. We'll talk about it at the end. And then you have three cases, wallet and some more accessories, which brings me to the three new and unique things about this phone. Like this is how the phone comes out of the box and you get these extra cases with separate set of screws, a small screwdriver, and oh, a different SIM ejector tray. So basically you can unscrew and remove the back panel. Now of course, I know what you guys are thinking. Even I was expecting the battery to be replaceable, but it just gives you an internal view of the phone. Looks pretty cool. Now we have all these blue, green and orange case. All of them have separate set of screws. And the good thing is the camera island buttons, everything is part of the case. Also you get a knob here so you can put on extra accessories like this magnet wallet where you can keep cards. Or this carabiner clip so you can hang the phone around your neck. I was mostly using this stand clip. It makes it easier to hold the phone like a pop socket. I even kept it in my jeans like this, like it is easier to pull out. And of course it acts like a phone stand. So you can have your cup of tea while watching Rinki and Sachivji have their cup of tea. Now, I 100% appreciate the design, like good job, phone looks unique, the in-hand feel, everything is great. But all these accessories and these cases are sold separately and we are not sure about the pricing of these but as per the price written on the box, the accessories cost 1000 rupees and the cases cost 2000 rupees. But when you're buying a smartphone under 20,000, it's a budget phone, right? So would you spend all those extra money on these accessories? Like if I have extra two, three thousand rupees, I would rather just buy a more expensive phone at 23,000. What do you guys think, right? And when you move on to the front, it has a big display. And if you compare it with the Nothing Phone 2A, the chin on the CMF Phone 1 is slightly thicker. The top and bottom bezels are not symmetrical, but again, it's good for the price. Now, nothing claims that it can go 2000 nits peak brightness, but in our testing, it went somewhere around 13 to 1400 nits. The CMF Phone 1 has a single speaker that could be a deal breaker for a few people, but... But it is sufficiently loud and it also supports HDR on YouTube. Now, the most interesting thing here is the processor choice. This comes with the all new Dimensity 7300, 8GB RAM and 128GB storage for the base variant. Now, good thing is you get a hybrid SIM card slot so you can also put up a micro SD card and expand the storage up to 2TB. And now, what is Dimensity 7300? See, it might sound like it's a big number and it's better, but processor naming schemes, I tell you. In short, if you look at Android 2 scores, 7300 scores less than 7200. And even in in terms of specs, the 7300 has similar cores some compared to the 7200, but 7200 is clocked higher. But come on, these are benchmarks. What matters is real world performance. So we played BGMI, you can play smooth graphics at 60 FPS and we played for about 30 minutes. We recorded the gameplay FPS and there are stutters, it gets about an average of 55 FPS. Overall, the performance for the price is one of the best. Also, the battery life is good with 5000 mAh. It easily lasted me a day on normal usage with about 40 to 50% battery still left at the end. And finally, it's raining in Delhi, so no heating issues or anything. Now, one interesting thing that I noticed is the CMF Phone 1 supports 33 watt fast charging and this has happened previously with nothing phones like they never hit the claimed charging wattage. And then this is a device which tells you exactly how much wattage the phone is charging at. And then we tested it and if you can see it's around 12 watt, 13 watt, sometimes it touches 15 watt. And we tested this multiple time, only once it could reach 25 to 26 watt. And this charging wattage thing has always been a problem with nothing phone like they claim very high but the phone in reality charges at very low speed. So if you have a nothing phone 
and let us know how your charging experience is. We would really like to know. And talking about the experience, I love the Nothing OS software experience. It's all smooth, the scrolling in pages. And look at my homepage. It's customized and it looks different. I like the ideology that all apps look the same on the page. So you don't open unnecessary social media apps. Also, I like how Nothing OS is aging. It's getting good features. Like now, whenever you take a screenshot, suppose I'm watching a reel. I like this car shown by Sayan. I just take a screenshot and then tap on this eye icon. It shares it instantly with ChatGPT and I can ask for the link, price and everything. It's like Samsung's circle to search, but two steps more. Now, occasionally there are jitters here and there. There is frame drops, but considering a budget phone, that's quite expected. By the way, you get two years of software updates and three years of security update, which is standard for this price. Now, here comes the most interesting part, camera. So you get a 50 megapixel Sony camera and a portrait or depth sensor. Now, we were really interested to see whether this depth camera actually works. Is nothing utilizing it? So we taped the depth sensor and we took a portrait photo of uh, Shobhikda. Shobhikda, please pose. And this is the photo with the tape. And then we removed the tape and took a portrait photo. And this is the photo without the tape. So with the tape, it doesn't do background blur. So it is using that depth sensor. However, the edge detection in portrait mode is not that good. As you can see in this photo, it completely missed the specs. Also, I took some low light photos and the lack of OIS shows here. The photos are soft or shaky. And in terms of videos, you can record at 4K 30 FPS. And on the front, you get a 16 megapixel selfie camera that can record in 1080p 60fps. And the same is the case with selfies. They are okay, okay. Overall, I believe the camera for this price is decent. If camera is your ultimate priority, I would recommend the Edge 50 Fusion. That has a really good camera at this price. Now, before we get to the conclusion that should you buy this phone, let's talk about the Buds and the watch. I use CMM Buds Pro 2 for some time. Like this time, they have made this knob functional on the case. See, if I turn it around, it increases the volume. If I press on it, it can play and pause the song and it has 50 dB ANC. I also use the CMF Watch Pro 2 and it has this swappable bezel, rotatable crown so that you can scroll through the menu. But again, it's very beta. Like the other day I was outside and auto brightness just wouldn't work. I tried to install a watch face from the app that would also not work. So we need some time to test all of these out. Probably we'll do a best smartwatch under 5000. So stay tuned and rather stay subscribed for that. And coming to the conclusion, the CMF phone one sort of makes me confused. Like I'm not sure about the price, but it would launch for under 20,000 or just consider it 18,000. And Nothing just launched the Nothing Phone 2A, which is their affordable version. So where does this stand? Like if I buy CMF Phone 1 for accessories, the amount I'll pay for the phone and accessories is almost equal to the Nothing Phone 2A price. So why wouldn't I buy the Nothing Phone 2A instead? Also, Nothing itself is a new upcoming brand. Last we checked about the service center in our TWS video, the service center experience of Nothing was not that good. So first, a new brand has to build itself and then launch a sub-brand, right? This CMF Phone 1 is good, like kudos for the effort, but if it is anywhere around 20,000, I would say the Moto H50 Fusion is good for the camera, or if you want that different design, or you want to stand out, get the Nothing Phone 2A, it's simply better. And on that note, this is Vadik signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, 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 pew.